guys, how's it going? So today I'm working on two kind of random things that are not at all connected to each other. But first I wanna to talk to you guys about mosquitoes. I don't know if you guys are dealing with them like we are in our area, but they are horrible, horrible problem. And to be honest, it's making it kind of miserable to be outside. Um, so I wanna talk about that. And then I also want to set up the arches to our back formal garden finally. We have showed them to you, I think, in a past garden tour, but they're still just sitting there. Actually one of them's laying on the ground. It keeps blowing over in a windstorm. So I'm really looking forward to getting those set up and kind of more sturdy put into the ground so that they're there and then I'll talk to you about my plans for the area. So let's talk about mosquitoes first. We've had two really mild winters in a row which I am very thankful for um, because you know we've had early springs it's been really nice our plants have all survived but with that you also get the problem of having bad bug years because you don't have a really hard cold winter to kill some of those overwintering insects and insect eggs. So aphids have been a huge problem. We have tons of earwigs, tons of squash bugs, and mosquitoes, really, really bad. Um, and usually I handle the mosquitoes fine because they're not super attracted to me. Like if Aaron and I are outside together, they'll always attack Aaron first. Um, if I'm outside by myself, they'll go ahead and attack me. Like I'm kind of second resort usually. If I'm the only thing out there, then they'll, they'll take it. Um, but if Benjamin's out with me, they like to swarm him. He's got whatever inside him, like Aaron does, that they're really attracted to. And it just makes me nervous with the things that mosquitoes can carry and spread. I just want to take care of the problem and I don't want it to be miserable um, for anybody to be outside really. So I contacted Bonide because we do work with them a little bit and I told them my plight and I just asked, what can we do? Um, what can we use that will really take care of this problem? And they know that I usually like to try natural organic pro uh, products first. So I've got a few things to show you here. Actually, I'm familiar with most of them because we carry them down at the garden center. So that made me kind of uh, co more comfortable with the whole idea. So let me show you. So I have these four things in front of me, mosquito beater, which I'm very familiar with. I have um, used both of these things before. These three right here are all natural for organic gardening. Um, and I'll go over the active ingredients and stuff with you here. And then this one is not a natural, but it's fairly benign when it comes to synthetics. Um, and if used responsibly, it does work really well. So let's talk about these right here. First off, this one right here. Let me get close to the actives so you can see what's in there. It's basically just all of the concentrated oils of the things that you can plant. You know, you see those plant lists that tell you what to put on your patio in containers to help keep mosquitoes away. This is just the concentrated form of it. And it's kind of in a little grain. Let me show you. It actually smells pretty good. I can smell that citronella and geranium the most, but you can see it's just kind of a nice fine grain. So in kind of a perfect environment, it says it will last up to three weeks. And I'm thinking that's in areas where it's not gonna get wet all the time. Um, so like not in grassy areas that are irrigated or spots if you get a lot of rain, you just may have to apply it more often. But the thing I like about this one and this one, which is the exact same thing, just liquid form, is that they're not insect killers. They're just a repellent. So you can kind of use this liberally and not have to worry about killing anything else in your garden. You're just merely just keeping them at bay. So if you have an event like a wedding or a party and you want to use your lawn areas but the mosquitoes are just horrific, I mean this is a really good option. So same active ingredients but you can hook it up to the end of your hose right here and then it shoots out this end and you can easily spray down all those areas. This one bottle covers up to like 5,000. Yeah. 5,000 square feet. So you can do that right before a party and that will help keep the mosquitoes down. And these two I'm really familiar with. Um, so I'm really comfortable with these. This one right here, let me turn the camera around again. So this one right here is for standing water areas and it actually will kill the larva stage of the mosquito. And see right there that the active ingredient is BT, which I've talked about before. So BT is another name for Bacillus thuringiensis, which is a bacteria naturally found in the soil that will take care of the larva stage of the mosquito. We use it in a spray form on our supertunias and superbells to keep the budworms out, um, which can be a big problem if we let it go. But this comes in like little grain forms in these little pouches right here, which one of these will do 50 square feet. When you're talking water in terms of mosquito, you only have to worry about the top layer of water because that's where the mosquitoes are, are laying their eggs and that's where the larva form is happening. Um, so when you're kind of calculating how much of this stuff you need, you just need to do square feet. So when one pouch does 50 square feet, that's a five by 10 area, you can break these things apart. Like you could, if you had 50 square feet or 100 square feet and you had to use two of these pouches, you could just, um, like toss them in and this little pouch will dissolve 
and all the grains will float out and kind of disperse on the uh, surface of the water. If you have smaller areas like bird baths, which is totally safe to use, it's not um, it's not toxic to wildlife or pets or people, um, you can break this in apart, which I'm going to do for my bird baths here. I've got two of them um, that have standing water. I mean, the water is not moving, and that's just perfect breeding ground for mosquitoes. Um, so this is a really good one that won't. It also won't harm fish. So those are the three naturals, and I always like to start with those first, and I will try them repeatedly, um, like just being consistent with them, because usually if you're consistent with anything, you'll see some results from it, but if you just have a horrific problem, and it's like these aren't touching it, um, that's when I would come in with something like this. This is a flying insect fog. Um, like I said, it is not a natural, but it does not have a bee warning, and you know, just like anything, so you could have a natural or organic insecticide um, that's a little bit more of a broad spectrum insecticide, and it doesn't matter that it's natural or organic. If you hit a honeybee with it, it'll still kill that honeybee. So just because it's natural or organic does not mean it's safe, and just because it's not a natural or organic doesn't mean that it's unsafe. It's all in about how you use it. And I think because these things are available on the market and there's much worse things than this, I think it's so important for us to educate ourselves and learn how to use these kind of things responsibly. Um, so like with anything that I'm using like this, if I have to resort to using something like this, you want to use it at dusk. You want to wait until your honeybees and everything, even though this is not supposed to hurt honeybees, you don't want to go bogging, you know, everything just because you can. You want to wait till everything, uh, the activity has kind of gone down a little bit and you're, that's when your mosquitoes are out. Like at dusk when you're trying to be outside with your family enjoying the evening, that's when they're the thickest. So that's the best time to fog. So I don't know. I feel like Aaron and I try to be pretty open and level-headed when it comes to things like this. I know it's really easy to get on a certain bandwagon and go with it, but I think that there's so much more to it and I think you need to really um, kind of take a step back and kind of realize where maybe everybody's coming from. Like maybe somebody has had a family member that's been affected by West Nile and they don't care what they're using. They will just kill those mosquitoes no matter what. So we have to make sure that, you know, because there are those people out there that we need to be educated and they need to be educated on how to use stuff. Um, and his, Aaron's analogies always kind of crack me up. He kind of always takes things to the absurd level. And he says, he said this to me earlier. He was like, you know, water. Water is totally benign, it's not toxic. But guess what, if you hold somebody's head under the water, it's not, it's not good. So you can take anything, no matter if it's natural or not, and you can make it or use it in a bad way. That might be taking it a little far, but anyway, that's kind of how I stand on things. I just feel like because they are available, um, we just need to know the options. We need to know how to use things properly. Um, let me show you what a fogger looks like. So this right here is a fogger. What you do is you take this stuff right here and you put it in the hopper, and then you attach your little propane fuel. These are like little camp stove propane cans and then you just turn it on and light it and then it will just put a light fog over the grass. And that's basically the only areas where I will use it. Even at dusk, I don't put it anywhere near my flowers. It just goes over the grassy areas um, and some of my d more dense shrubs where there are no flowers. So I still, even, even though it's not supposed to hurt bees and even though the bees are um, in bed for the night essentially, I still try not to touch any of the flowers with it. But the cool thing about this particular fog and I guess you can spray it as well, um, is that it doesn't have a really strong residual. It only lasts for just a tiny little bit and it only um, is there to kind of kill the population that's out right now and then it goes away. Um, so it's not gonna hang out until the next morning so that if you do happen to get a drift of it on something, it's not gonna affect anything that comes out the next day. So anyway, I just thought it might be helpful to you guys just to show you a few things that I'm gonna be trying out here. Of course, I'm not gonna be using this unless it becomes a huge issue. I'm gonna be just trying these things for now. So in fact, we can go out right now and I will break up a couple of these and we'll get them in some bird baths. I need to clean my bird baths so, though, so don't judge me. They're kind of full of algae right now. Um, and then I will show you how this works right here at the end of a hose. This one's pretty like self-explanatory. You just kind of sprinkle this one around so I won't show that one. Um, but we're kind of all in the same boat here and I feel like in the middle of summer when it starts to get really hot, that's when issues come about. And uh, you know, I thought it just might be helpful to talk about some of those things. So anyway, let's go get these things going. So here's the first bird bath and I can actually see the mosquitoes flying all over. I don't know if you guys can in the camera. Um, so clearly this is not 50 square feet. I'm only gonna need a little bit. So I've got my pouch that I just kind of punched a hole in and I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit in here. 
and that should do it. So I do fill this bird bath up with water about every other day. So I'm just gonna put the remainder of this pouch right underneath by the base of the bird bath. So I can just bend over and grab it and pour a little bit more in. That way I just have easy access. It's kind of protected from any water. It doesn't get overhead sprinkled from this area. So we should be okay. Okay, so now I'm gonna go get the hose end sprayer and I'll attach it to one of my hoses so you can see how that works, just in case you've never used one of them. I actually find those to be incredibly handy. If I can get a bottle of anything that has that attachment on the top, I will opt for that one every time. I also have something, it's like a dial, dial in spray. I think it's from Bonite as well. I have it out in the barn, I'll go get it in a minute. I use it a ton for like fungicides and things like that. Um, but it's got a hopper and you can pour whatever it is that you're using in that hopper and there's a dial on the top that you can say what concentration you need it, like what dilution you need it to come out at. Put it on the end of your hose and then you can use whatever you want so that I can always, I don't know, it just sprays so far, it makes the job a lot easier. So anyway, let me go grab that bottle. Okay, make sure it's set to off when you go turn on your hose. So basically all I need to do is turn this purple dial, you see that right there with the little tab. I turn it to the on position and it'll start spraying in the grass. So I'm gonna um, set the camera up so you can see that because I can't do it with just one hand. Okay, so there's the dial and we turn it on by bend tab back. Ooh, just like that. It actually smells like lemons out here now, um, but you can see how easy it is to do. And everything that's left in the bottle is still the concentrate. So you can unhook it from your hose when you're done, store it somewhere, bring it back out when you need to use it again. So it just draws up just the amount it needs to spray out and that's it. Let me run to the barn and grab my hose and sprayer so you can see what that one looks like. Because honestly, investing in one of those has been a really good thing for me anyway. I'm looking around and I can see everything that needs a little bit of water. Can't believe we're at the end of June though and it's only a high of 81 today. Not too shabby. All right, there it is. So it's called the Auto Mix and Spray and you can see that you put your concentrate in the hopper down here and then on the top there's a dial and you can set it to whatever dilution rate you need. There's the on off switch on the top there. You hook your hose to that end and then it sprays out this, and you can do three different spray patterns here. So that is what I'm doing currently for mosquitoes this year, and I'll let you guys know how it all goes and whether or not I change it up or try something else out. Um, of course, there are a lot of harsher things out there available. Um, if you decide to go that route, I would just recommend that you just get as much education as you can on the subject. If you can find something less harsh, do that first. Like, you know, I'm trying all of the natural ways first, trying to use them at the proper time, and if I can take care of them at their source, I feel like if I can take care of any standing water issues in the area and kind of be like kill them where it's actually happening where the eggs are actually hatching that's the best way to go because then that can keep it from becoming a huge huge problem so I'm gonna try that route first and then we'll move from there so anyway now we get to move on to the fun part which is the garden arches I'm gonna go grab Aaron because I'm definitely gonna need a second pair of hands for this Russell what are you doing hey bud so there's Aaron and there's one of the arches right there so these are called the York Arch, right, Erin? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so once we get it sunk in the ground, it should be about 10 feet tall and 12 feet wide. So we actually worked with Garden Artisans, who we got the hay racks from for our front fence line to get these arches. They actually had to come from the UK because I couldn't find arches that were this big anywhere local or anywhere even near us, like remotely near us. Um, so anyway, I was so excited to get these and I am planning, I was planning on doing some kind of maybe fruit tree on them, um, but I've been watching the light and this one on this side, we've got, let me turn around, we've got a tree right above us and I think it casts a little bit too much shade. So I think I'm gonna have to rethink what I'm gonna do. The other side gets full sun. They're far enough apart that I think I could do different things on each arch, um, but I'm still, like the jury's out. I'd love to know what your guys' opinion is and what you think I should grow up the arches. Although I do think like training some sort of tree would be cool still. I have no idea. <laughs> so I think this is how it works. We've got, of course, two poles on each side. We've got what they call hole makers. That's what they say on them. And we're supposed to pound each one of these in right to the bottom of the hole maker uh, thing. And Aaron's excited because he's using his brand new, like little mini sledgehammer. Yeah. What's it called? Uh, it's a hammer, I guess. Yeah, it's big. Three pound hammer. 
it's big. Anyway, so we make holes that are 15 inches deep and then these will sink down into the holes and we'll tamp them in really well. And then we'll work on adjusting these horizontal bars. We just put them in kind of randomly and we'll work on getting them all evenly spaced out. Question. Yes. I don't think the entryway is wide enough. Okay. See, notice how it's in the gravel right there, but it's in the dirt over here. Yes. What do you want to do about that? I think that if you and I could measure and get it centered as good as possible, I was kind of thinking that the tree that we planted would kind of bridge the gap. You know what I'm saying? Like between the arch and the fence. And these big pots, these are from Henry Studio. What are they called? Giant classical palm pots. Yeah. Love these. And that was the reason I wanted big pots over here as well to kind of mask the like opening i feel like a little kid i love stuff like this to be able to twirl it around i don't know okay, <laughs> swords let's, let's sword <laughs> so here's here's the dilemma is that if we if we shift the whole thing uh -huh. equal you're gonna hit the the pavers, pavers. We the pavers can go okay so let's mm -hmm. pull up the pavers let's get a gorilla cart okay. and get the pavers how come projects are never as straightforward as i hope they'll be Got you a cart? Yes. I think I'm wearing the wrong shoes. All right, I'm gonna jump in and help. So I'm gonna set up the camera, and then when we get some progress, I will explain what's going on. how it goes oh my word what is with all these weeds right here okay so we got the first one set in the ground and I don't know I mean we're dealing with a lot of different lines here and lines that aren't level like the fence is not level um, it kind of slopes down that way and then we're dealing with some gaps as well and we think that this side might be twisted a little bit so Aaron thinks that it's good <laughs> and and that we should just leave it and plant the trees and we won't notice it but I don't know it might drive me crazy so I think I'm just gonna like let it sit here for a minute or a day or two and just kind of I might mess with it I think I think what might help is to make a couple new holes on this side and kind of make it a little wider so that that side doesn't, because to me it looks like it's coming in toward the center on the bottom, which I don't want that to happen. But while this is sitting up here, I'll show you how these move. They're really easy. You just use an Allen wrench here and there's a little thing that you can loosen on each one of these. So you can adjust them up or down so that you can make the spacing however you want. And this isn't really where I want it because I need to measure. So I'm just gonna lightly kind of tighten it just for now and then we'll come in and measure because you can see that there's like there's way too much space in between this one and this one um, and so I just need to mess with these a little bit but it's really really easy to do um, and when I have time to do that I'll come out and get that finished but I'm just happy that it's in the ground and it feels solid so we have one more to get in the ground so here's the second one kind of in pieces and this opening is even more different we think it's a different size and the fence is a different size. It's just so weird. This one's a lot higher than this one is. The flowers though are doing really good. Look at how beautiful those are. All right guys, that one looks awesome. Even with the differences we have going on in fence, I actually think this is gonna help to kind of bridge the gap because I don't think in the end you'll actually be able to see the beams of the fence or the vertical posts because the trees will get quite a lot bigger. I am gonna have to do a little bit of rework of this flower bed though because you can see it kind of comes out quite wide. I have that pot kind of right up to the edge and there are day lilies and there's one standby me clematis that I need to move over which won't be a big deal and then I'll kind of just reshape the flower bed so I can move this container over so it's at kind of the same position as the one on the other side. So I think what we're gonna do is work on all of the horizontal kind of cross pieces together later because Aaron has to leave and go do something. So we knew we had enough time to get him in the ground, um, but we'll finish up the project later. But let me go grab a couple of the trees that I was initially thinking of planting back here so you can kind of get an idea of what I'm going for. See right here, this is why we're doing mosquito spray. He's got bites on his face. 
Poor little dude. So those are the two trees that I initially picked up for this project and I may still use them unless I decide to go with something fruit because I thought it would be kind of neat to train fruit trees on here and like have pears or apples hanging down. That would be really kind of whimsical, I think. Um, and of course the tree, whatever I decide to use, will be lashed down to the arbor to create that arch shape. Um, they won't be sticking straight up like that. So what I'm going to do probably is just let those sit there for a day or two and kind of think about it and decide what I want to do. Now these get full sun while the other opening on the other end gets partial shade because of that big elm tree. Let's show everyone the tags on these trees, baby. So this right here is the name of the tree. It's a, a European hornbeam pyramidal. They take to trimming and shaping really, really well. And I've seen a lot of them used in this sort of function when we tour estate gardens in England. Um, so anyway, I thought it might be a good option. And then it could get, like, I don't mind if it gets quite wide and creates kind of a nice thick arch and eventually you won't be able to see the arch at all and that's why I chose kind of plain ones. You can get like lattice that goes in between but I kind of thought that was unnecessary for how I'm going to use them. Huh bud? Oh bless you! Bless you baby. Do you want to write on that? Yeah. Okay you've got to hold on. Hold on tight okay baby? Anyway guys, I think that's going to be it for this video. I still have some work to do on the arches, but you kind of get the general idea. I thought you might enjoy just seeing them go in initially, and I would love to know what you would grow on them if they were in your garden. Like, you the fruit. Whoa, my goodness. Yeah. Be careful. You want down? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Like, would you grow fruit trees on them? Do you think that's a good idea? Or would you do some kind of vine, like wisteria? Um, I mean, I don't know. I think there are so many different options. I just thought it was such a good opportunity to create a big structural piece and to create something different um, and some distinction from the driveway to the back formal garden. And Benjamin's trying to grab the camera from me. Hey! I think we're gonna go do some playing. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye! <laughs>